Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivartan Kamani, an integration technical architect. Today we are going to see some simple techniques of using DataWeb and we are going to see a map, reduce and filter operators. And we are also going to see uh, how to use distinct by and order by functions. Let's get started. I have created a Mule 4 application and included a sample flow with a logger and the set payload. And we are going to use a bookstore example, which you can take it from uh, W3 schools, which contains the details of book, such as title, author, year, and price, which we are going to see how to transform this into the different uh, uh, result that we want. So let's use SOAP UI tool, and I have copied the XML here, and let's run to see what the response is. So uh, whatever we have given, we got as a response. Now let's see uh, how to transform this XML into the desired format. So let's include this uh, data V. While we transform uh, XML into the different format, we always need to define the metadata, which will ease your transformation. And you can see uh, your, the result immediately by using preview options. Uh, if you define the metadata already, how to do that? Click on it and uh, come to metadata section and then create a new one, which I have already created and let's see how to edit it. So this is the books XML, which I have created through this uh, sample XML. You can simply choose uh, the type XML and then choose either schema or example. Now I have used example and I have chosen the file, uh, which I have stored already uh, to get this structure uh, listed out. So let me choose this and then uh, click select, so which I have selected already. Now let's start with the transformation activity. And first I'm going to investigate how the input structure is uh, interpreted uh, in data uh, by using application slash Java. In one of the videos, we have already seen that always application slash Java treats it as a key value pair. And then we we'll, let's see how the structure looks like. So I'm going to use uh, uh, payload before we uh, actually do the transformation. And let's see. Uh, create the sample. This is uh, coming here by using the sample because I have already loaded that XML and the metadata. So which uh, transform uh, transformation uses and then uh, we can visualize how the data looks like before we do the actual transformation. So it's always better to understand how things work internally so that uh, you have a better understanding and you have better control over transformation. So the pay payload is automatically treated as application slash Java which in turn, um, uh, MuleSoft uses uh, a Java data type uh, to treat the internal data. So you can see here individual fields are uh, um, identified as a string. And then uh, these collections are uh, uh, stored under the uh, hash map. So always uh, uh, hash map can be used as a key value pair. Um, so this is better to understand before we do the actual transformation. So let's choose uh, JSON now, so that uh, payload is treated as a JSON. This is a simple transformation that we have done from uh, XML to JSON. Now we are going to start with the basics and then increase the complexity one by one so that you follow better. So let's start with uh, books and I'm going to have uh, a book inside which contains uh, book name. So we have created a, a, a book element uh, um, in the JSON. Now we will use uh, XML type here. Now you can see here, uh, uh, we have created an XML structure here. So now we are going to use the actual XML array, which you can see here, we can go back to the XML. So this is uh, uh, XML contains array of uh, book elements. So which we are going to iterate uh, uh, to transform these XML values into the format that we need. So now what we are going to do is uh, in place of name and author, we are going to substitute and iterate the values that are available in the book elements under bookstore. 
How do we do this? Let's go back to the data weave transformation. And under the book, we use payload dot bookstore dot star book. So what is this? So we are uh, uh, retrieving the elements uh, in the order of uh, XML elements. So first we uh, start with the payload and it contains uh, uh, bookstore, which is a root element, which, which we used here. And under the root element, we have an array of uh, elements called book. So we put a little uh, symbol here, I am asterisk, to indicate the collection uh, as an array. So to iterate it, we have to use map operator with the help of uh, data and index. So uh, we are going to give uh, or declare elements uh, for using the data while we iterate. You can imagine it's like a for i equal to 0 to 3. So this will be treated as an actual data and this will be treated as an index i. And this will be uh, replaced by the actual data by means of this uh, data element, data dot. There you see the title is automatically showing by tooltip and author you can use the same way and choose author. So now we have iterated uh, the array of book elements into the format that we need. Now let's run the application and see the response. Let's save it. Go to SOAP UI tool and run it. So we got the same response as we have seen in the preview. But uh, I have made one observation uh, for the purpose of learning. So I have copied this book element uh, twice so that it's uh, replicated with a duplicate uh, uh, book name and author, Harry Potter. So how do we avoid this? It's a very simple technique to use uh, distinct by, which we are going to use. Distinct by and dollar. So this will remove uh, and remove the identical element if there are any. Let's go back to SOAP UI tool and run it. Now you can see the duplicate element that got eliminated. Now suppose I want uh, uh, these elements in certain order. Uh, how do I uh, sort it based on some key field? Let's go back. So let's cover this, the entire uh, result that we got as an array. So the, this uh, book key value pair comes as an array. It's, it's an array of book element. So this book element can be covered uh, uh, within parenthesis and then it's an array that we are going to put it in some order. Order by dollar dot uh, name. So this dollar um, is a resultant array which we created here. So which contains only name and author. This is particularly renamed because I want to uh, show you how it works because um, instead of choosing the actual payload field, we need to use uh, dollar which is a resultant of this array that we got here which uh, is a key value pair with the field name and author so which we used here so let's save it and go back and run it here so now you can see uh, it's in the order of uh, name book name it starts with e h l and x we can go ahead and fill in the other fields let's say price For better understanding, let's use cost. So we have the cost here, and then uh, we have year. Let's do that as well. So now we got all the field. Let's run it. Server restarted. Now we got the cost and year. So what if uh, I want to choose and filter only the uh, element that's satisfying certain criteria? For example, years greater than uh, 2002. Let's do that. Let's go to this transform. Let's enable the preview. And we are going to introduce filter with the criteria of dollar dot year greater than 2002. 
So the filter is used to filter the array based on certain criteria. So um, we are using the criteria year greater than uh, 2002. Let's save this and run it. Now you can see only the books that are greater than 2002. Since there is no filtering uh, happening, we can increase uh, uh, the different criteria. We'll say instead of 2002, we'll say 2003. Let's save it. Let's go back. Now we can see only two books coming. So filter, um, uh, filter operator is used to filter the array based on certain conditions framed by array fields. In order to get the array fields, you need to use dollar because dollar is the whole set of array that is uh, retrieved based on this criteria, which is retrieving just book elements, where year is a part of the book field. So that will be applied here and then you will see only the filtered response. Now let's move ahead uh, and see how to use a reduce operator here. So reduce operator is used to uh, aggregate uh, some value uh, and then uh, show it as aggregated response. So now that we are going to find out uh, the sum of all the cost of the books, which is an aggregated result. So we will call it as total and uh, we need to find out by using reduce, reducing this uh, uh, elements in this array. So we can, we will use this array and call it reduce and uh, under which we are going to have uh, some index data and we are going to initialize the value to be aggregated which leads to sum plus book dot uh, we'll call it price so let's uh, explain this well so we are going to reduce uh, the element one of the fields that are available in this uh, array so we retrieved an array which we are going to reduce and we call the element as bk, which is like a um, index or the element key that stores the key value pair. And we are going to introduce one element and initialize it as zero, which is a basically a variable, which results in uh, sum plus uh, the array element dot price. Price is the field belonging to that particular array. So which you can simply remember as sum equal to sum plus uh, uh, a of i. In that way, you can say sum equal to sum plus uh, uh, array dot uh, element. Now let's check out the result. Let's run it. And you can see the total 179.92. Why is this? This is only 30 and 29 and it should be 59. So what's happening here? Let's go back. So here we already applied a filter criteria in the resultant array, which is a book. But here we have not then done that filtering, so which we are going to basically apply here. Let's save this. Allow the server to restart. Let's go back and check. Now even now you can see here uh, it's uh, reduced to some extent, but you can see it's 30 plus uh, 29 is uh, 89, which is something is not right here. What's happening? Let's go back choose this transformation and you can see here we have uh, uh, three consecutive operations applied one is filter distinct by and map in the previous section but here we have done only filter and reduce which leads to the incorrect one because of this uh, uh, duplicate uh, array element so we will copy this distinct by here and then apply in sequence let's save this go back and check it out now it's 59.99 so hope you have enjoyed this video and got benefited on how the data weave functions work and now let's see more complicated operations in the next video as usual please like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video bye